We need to talk about what coronavirus recoveries look like. Much remains unknown about the virus, and many of the common symptoms, such as gastrointestinal issues and loss of smell, were only just being identified. But recently, the world has learned more about what the virus's symptoms can look like, but we still don't know much about the long-term health impacts, the possibility of immunity, how long infected patients remain contagious, or what recovery looks like. We need to start paying closer attention to the stories of coronavirus survivors. People have shared stories of symptoms cycling on and off, and recoveries, even for mild cases, that have taken much longer than two weeks. Sammy Avilas, an otherwise healthy 31-year-old in our support group, shared that on day 21 of symptoms, while her breathing had not felt strained enough to require medical attention, she was still coughing up blood, and her fever was breaking only to come back days later, like clockwork. Charlie, 24, described his case as relatively mild, but said that more than 23 days into the illness, he's still experiencing a fever, cough and shortness of breath. Sabrina Blight, 26, is grappling with severe fatigue and persistent breathing issues that make it difficult to walk, a month after she first felt symptoms. Jag Singh, 55, is still dealing with a persistent cough, four weeks after his initial symptoms. While my fever and severe shortness of breath have disappeared, my road to recovery has been far from linear. In the time since, I've experienced fatigue, intense headaches, continued congestion, a sore throat, trouble focusing and short-term memory loss. Even more confusing than the arrival of new symptoms is the way my progress seems to stop and start. The news is filled with uplifting stories of patients who have survived COVID-19, including my own, but rarely do these narratives cover the long and jagged road to recovery that follows. The World Health Organization has stated that people with mild cases can expect recovery to take two weeks, while those with severe cases may take up to six weeks to recover, but the distinction between mild and severe cases is confusing, and many of us are experiencing symptoms for longer. Some of the young people in my online support group are struggling to get more time off from work, they are, after all, supposedly recovered. In addition to the physical symptoms that still keep me up at night, I have frequent nightmares in which I am once again gasping for breath. Instead, I was told to wait seven days from the first day of symptoms and to make sure the last three days were fever-free, but the department representative put me on hold several times to confirm these details, and neither of us seemed very confident in the instructions. I've since learned of a patient in Singapore who despite feeling fine continues to test positive after 34 symptom-free days in confinement. After all, while infection rates increase, the newness of the virus means that there still isn't anyone in the world who can report on what life is like six, or even four, months post-symptoms. More robust attention to understanding the recovery process will help survivors grapple with the inevitable physical and mental health burdens of reintegrating into society, and can aid us all in preparing for the next stage of this crisis. After all, the community of coronavirus survivors is a group that will only continue to grow. The media can help by portraying what the months and weeks after contracting coronavirus will look like for people who are infected. Those of us not working on the front lines in hospitals can do our part by virtually connecting with friends who are recovering, educating ourselves on their needs, and sharing their stories. Employers will need to reconsider expectations of COVID-19 survivors, and we can expect disability law to be tested. Darkness and confusion have characterized much of the past month, and certainly defined the experience of being sick with coronavirus.